I'm Matt. I'm Shane. And if you like what you hear, make sure you hit that thumbs up button real hard. And make sure you subscribe to Comic Movie Marks. And also click that little bell for all of the notifications. Whee! Always remember, if Trailer Trash can do it, anyone can do it. Hello and welcome everyone to the Ride Along with the Marks, I forgot, Riding with the Marks. Yeah. Or whatever the hell. So we just came out of Predator. Okay, so we're going to do a non-spoiler drive along for The Predator, written and directed by Shane Black. Yeah, so uh, we are here, we're at this time we are attempting without a microphone, it's a straight from the iPhone, so I guess this will be a decent advertisement for you, <laughs> and uh, let, let's hope, hope that it comes out. We are, uh, yeah, so what to say about The Predator? Um, it's not as terrible as you thought. <laughs> right, yeah. It is, uh, without ruining too much, uh, think of another Shane Black movie has some similarities to that. Shane Black definitely has a style, um, and it, it goes right into that. If you're expecting kind of a very straightforward um, one similar to the first Predator movie, it's not quite like that. has a little bit more detail, more evolution in this. This is obviously... The third installment of the franchise, I guess they're no fourth. They, uh, are they including uh, the Predators or yeah. something like that? Okay. The Predators, where he's on the where the Adrian Brody's on the fucking island, okay, on the planet, okay. Pianist. Got some. <laughs> where he does his best I, Batman voice. I, I thought they were pulling uh, like a Superman two and just saying nope, only one and two, and then uh, and then this one. No, that one's still official. And okay. Then, then you got the question whether or not you count the ADP movie, so that would actually make six total. But. Yeah, well, uh, from, uh, not to get into too detailed on this, but I thought I read somewhere that they were only... Uh, no, yeah, they're not canon. Yeah. They're not right. canon, but it's okay. just, just talking about, like, in the scope of things. Right. So, uh, yeah, it has, has some good detail to it. Um, there's some humor in it, That that's what, what I meant by it's a Shane Black type film. Um... Most of not it, not good humor. <laughs> yeah, most of it's probably not not that solid. Uh, I don't know if it's because of a guy who was sitting next to me who was just kind of getting on my nerves a little bit, uh, or if it just had shitty humor. Uh, I mean, he's Shane Black is known for writing, obviously Iron Man three, um, lethal the Lethal Weapon movies. Uh, what else has has he done? He has kiss, a style. Kiss, bang, bang. Oh yeah. So, <laughs> wow. Okay. Yeah. Oh, no, that that one. Yeah. He was in the original Predator. Yeah. As Hawkins. Yeah. So, this movie, I was dreading it from day one because of Shane Black in general. Because it made me feel like that his style was just not going to fit the Predator movies. It just, it just, it wasn't. And it really, it doesn't. And I think the best, the best way to put it is now, it's uh, Deadpool humor ish. With predators, it, it, it tries to be Deadpool humor. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I, I think I, I thought that was a great comparison. Matt was talking about before we went into the movie. There's a possibility we are kind of in a uh, different phase, I guess, with movies where they all have to have humor in them. Um, the the original, at least the first two Predators, have good one-liners, but it's not peppered through the entire movie. This one has a consistent amount of humor, um, but it. I don't know. Not not all of it it works. Uh, and Matt's comparison, I think, was pretty close. And then about partway through the movie, he he leans over and says, "Oh, this is kind of close to Deadpool humor." I think there's a lot of blood. There's a lot of uh, dick jokes. A lot of fuck jokes. Yeah. A lot of different jokes like that that are just you know more more uh, driven towards adults. Mm -hmm. uh, so the uh, I will say uh, the character, the guy from Logan. I cannot remember the actor's name. I thought he actually played a pretty convincing captain yeah, sniper. Uh, absolutely. I, I thought he did a pretty solid job. I think for the most part, the acting uh, was pretty solid. The action was, was awesome. There was several parts where I was like, holy shit, that was cool. Um, so I, I thought that that was that's pretty solid in that regard. The uh, worst, probably most ridiculous character in the whole movie was Olivia Munn's character. She went from, like, scientist just out of nowhere to uh, now all of a sudden she's sprinting along with a predator. No real no real spoilers here. 
but she's like keeping up with him with a tranquilizer gun. Yeah. And then she's jumping off of stuff, flying Sliding, through the air. Yeah. yeah. Oh, and she becomes the action star of all time. Yeah. Yeah. And she just she comes up in the most convenient times. She's just using an uh, assault rifle, an automatic rifle. Well, like like it's fucking natural. She's just unloading. Shoot, well, she actually looked really terrible shooting it. <laughs> but I don't know why they didn't make her a uh, member of the military who just happens to like work in a science division or something. Yeah, she like should that. have had a military background yeah. the way she was acting. Yeah. Because it was ridiculous. She 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 had like no fear really. I mean, there's like one part where she is kind of scared, but like really she had no fear. She was just jumping in yeah. front of stuff. She didn't give a shit. She's fighting off fucking uh, predator dogs, like no problem. And <laughs> she's killing guys, no problem. Like yeah. she has no remorse. Yeah. <laughs> and so it just, was just like no <laughs> just ridiculous character. She was just came out of nowhere. She knew all the right things to say to push the story along. Mm -hmm. That's one of my big problems with Shane Black movies for the most part, is the dialogue is very, very dumbed down. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying like the original Predator or the other ones are fucking no, Shakespearean plays <laughs> or something. But they try to cram so much in there and so the dialogue just becomes so dumbed down because they just have to hand feed you all this information mm -hmm. that's going on. And it's just like it's just not practical. It's just not practical why these guys even know what's going on, why they know how this predators or why these predators are coming to earth it's just kind of ridiculous and it just really kills when they when they're talking about this stuff it really just bogs the movie down mm -hmm. makes me go just roll my eyes like oh yeah well that's cool yeah but, yeah exactly very convenient i guess with alien it, it is always kind of hard uh, i i mean this is not too crazy spoilers but they have a translator at one point uh a digital one so that just very very convenient. Oh, that he can tap into? Right, yeah. Using yeah. the Wi-Fi password. Yeah, right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and he neutralizes all the vehicles just with his mind. Right. I don't know. It's like, there's so much potential with what they try to do with the super predator that you see in the, the trailers and stuff. There's like a lot of potential, but it's just so wasted because it just really means nothing. It really means nothing because he just really just becomes a regular predator. He, you know, it just... There's just, I guess you just can't get hurt by bullets, sort of. Right. It's convenient. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> that, a, there was a lot of inconsistencies with that. Uh, we didn't see uh, as much. I was debating if I wanted to talk about this or not, um, it, because I don't know if it's a spoiler, but one of my biggest disappointments for some reason was the lack of how much we saw of the Predator side. In, in the original ones, I feel like you see a lot of the predator, and in yeah. this, it was just sprinkled in, and you don't get to see that a whole lot. The predator vision. Yeah, exactly. Which I, I I always enjoyed. I thought that was that was always a pretty cool. Touch. I think I saw more predator vision in the UFC that I watched Saturday because <laughs> they were advertising it, so they would do the predator vision over the crowd. Oh, really? Yeah, I think I saw more predator vision in that than I did in this movie. Yeah, probably. That that sounds pretty accurate. Uh, one of the things that Matt and I might be on the opposite sides of is the the score in this. Oh, I thought it was awful. I mean, they use the original score every once in a while. Yep. Dun, 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 you know, they used it they used it every once in a while and they used it properly, but that mm -hmm. it, there's at the end when all the shit's going down, it it sounds it just didn't make sense. It's like an orchestral like high beat motion and it just didn't make any sense for what was going on. People, you know, people are dying and it's like shit's happening and to me, so I I looked it up when we were leaving. Um, it's Henry Jackman who was was the composer. He uh, surprisingly also did some other Marvel movies, Civil War, uh, <laughs> Winter Soldier. He did X Men: First Class. So uh, the best comparison is this is almost Danny Elfman type. Um, Danny Elfman to Justice League is Henry Jackman to the Predator, where he borrows a lot from from pr things previously. And to me, it worked because it almost felt like it was '80s theme music. Even in the even in the final act, it felt like uh, this this belonged right in the '80s. In the you know the late '80s, early '90s, it fit right in there. That's why I think it worked. I agree, uh, not the best for modern type scores. Well, it's not best in the moment. Is what my problem was. It was like I can understand maybe something uh, using a score on another point or something like that. Like, they would probably use something like that in a more uh, deeper point where they're, like, looking or there's not so much 
there's not some fucking jumpy cuts going on. Like, it just, it didn't make sense for what was going on on the screen. I don't know. It just, at the end, my big problem was the end. I didn't mind throughout the movie. Mm -hmm. It didn't seem, it didn't really stick out to me until they used the original Predator theme. But that ending, that, that beat, that whole setup just was awkward as shit. It was like something else was supposed to be happening. It, maybe it was, And they threw that on there. That, that might be it. Is I, I noticed, uh, so the very, very first scene of the movie sounded very uh, orchestral, uh, Star Wars-y, kind of, because it was space. I'm like, okay, that's interesting. And then it jumps right into uh, very similar to the first and second Predator movies, where it sounds almost just from that. So I think I was kind of um, preconditioned a little bit. So as the movie played out and it got to the final act, I was like, oh, okay, I see what they're doing. Um, whereas if, if you notice it a little bit later, that most of the movie kind of played into the 80s type um, scores, that it, that that may throw you off a little bit. And, and I, I'm not saying that it was it was great that it even worked for the third act. I just feel that that was I, I could see what what he was attempting. So, uh, but again, nothing nothing super creative either. Um, I, I would I would like to see uh, a Predator movie done a little more um, serious and, and dark. I, I, I think simplistic. I mean, I think that people, yeah. they, a lot of studios, because they're trying to franchise shit, they lose track of what the simplicity of what a Predator movie could be. Like, I mean, I guess there's going to be people that are going to argue like they're trying to uh, just capture what was in the old one and like just going to just do a soft reboot remake of it mm -hmm. and it's just going to be the same shit yeah there's like, a way like to Star do it Wars. but there's a way to do it mm -hmm. there's a way to do it and somebody's just got to figure it out yeah like, there's a way to make it a lot better there's yeah. got to be i mean they, they used a lot of lines in this they did there's a good amount of nostalgia some things you'll, you'll chuckle out of like oh, okay that, that's that's where this comes from and, but um, a lot of them don't make sense either though that's the thing though they say one line like okay it's kind of small not even really a spoiler I'm just going to talk about the words that were used. One guy yells to another guy, get to the chopper. Right. They come back with motorcycles. <laughs> what? Uh, yeah. Like, it, it was just like, it was just thrown out there just so he could have the reference. Right. And it didn't apply to the scene. Now, with this movie, it had heavy reshoots, and you can tell. You can tell that the story was drastically changed from what it was. And I don't know if you can blame Shane Black for this or not. Is it the studio's fault? Is it test screenings? Because I heard about the test screenings doing poorly. Is is it uh, his fault that it's not? That the movie feels so choppy. That's why I think my biggest hate on this movie is it's so choppy. It just bounces around. Dialogue just abruptly gets cut. People die. You don't even realize yeah. it. The like, third, we, we the third act, I think, is the worst. The shaky cam. I'm like, yeah. your, your main villain is CGI. Like, why is there so much shaky cam? Mm -hmm. And uh, he's CGI. <laughs> I mean, it's all done with a computer. Like, why is there so much shaky cam? It, it, the, the abrupt, the shaky cam and the abrupt uh, edits and everything, you could tell the movie was cut down to the bare minimum again. And I don't know. I don't know if you can really blame. I mean, the dialogue is still there. It's still Shane Black's dialogue. And it still sucks. And it's still <laughs> and it's still his jokes, which in this one, I would say 60-40, maybe, maybe 70-30. Like, they're good. I like them. They were more rated R jokes, and I thought they were pretty funny. It's like as in 60 worked and, and yeah, 40 yeah. didn't? Oh, I, okay. I, I, I like oh, a good deal. A little I, generous. I, well, I, like the, I, don't know, I mean, I don't know. Maybe I'm just remembering the really good ones and shit. Yeah, that, that, that could be. I don't know. The, the very beginning, again, I have to watch this movie again. Uh, and, and see if maybe the humor lands a little bit more other than the the guy just to give a little bit of a background a little bit of backstory the person who was sitting next to me was laughing during all the previews and so I could kind of tell he was just ready to laugh it's, it, it was like he was going into a comedy movie or a comedy special or something like that where he's just chuckling like oh I, I can't wait to laugh at this entire movie that's where he was fine yeah, it could be. <laughs> could have been uh, that's what it felt like. So he was laughing at everything. I'm like, dude, it's not even funny. And so for me, uh, the humor may be 50-50. Uh, but that might even be a little too nice. There, the, there was one joke that just really made me laugh pretty hard. Yeah. Yeah. And that was... Uh, there were a couple of them. There, there was a couple of them, yeah, but there was one specifically that was uh, that was great. And I almost want to, I don't want to spoil it. I almost want to repeat it, but <laughs> but it was so in the spoiler one. Yeah, we'll talk about it in the spoiler yeah. one. And so overall, the movie is. I mean, if you have extremely low expectations like I did, and I trust me, I had probably the 
lowest standard of expectations possible going into this movie. Um, I, it, it was decent, at least the first three quarters of the movie. Yeah. I actually thought worked. Yeah. And they did okay. Olivia Munn's character's insane and ridiculous. There's also kind of one of the antagonist human guys. He's kind of like over the top and I don't know what the point of him really was other than he loves chewing gum. Um, <laughs> like he was just really over the top, but I get it. They kind of tried to get that 80s feel where just characters are just over the top mm -hmm. and shit. So it was better. The ending just sucks. It sucks. The whole thing just sucks at the end. There's like a, it gets to a point where you're like, one, you don't know who's dying, you don't know what's going on, it's all fucked up, and just random shit starts happening, and it makes no sense at all. The ending just completely falls apart, and so enjoy the first three quarters. Yeah, <laughs> decent film. I I'd say uh, definitely a rental. Yeah, um, rental. It, you you could go watch it in the theaters if you Maybe want. Maybe matinee. Yeah, I mean, if you if you're a diehard Predator fan like me, oh uh, Shane, oh I enjoy them. Oh yeah, I watch the Predator not, almost not, once a month. Not, not the die original hard, Predator. But... <laughs> I watch the original Predator at least once a month, almost. Stay in your goddamn lane, motherfucker. Anyway, um, yeah. So if you know matinee, maybe yeah. wait until it gets to the cheaper. Uh, if you have like a dollar, two dollar theaters or something like that. Right. Um, wait till it gets in there. But other than that, yeah, rental. And maybe we'll get a Shane Black director's cut. So, I don't know. Hope not. Hashtag release the... <laughs> yeah. Hashtag release the black cut. <laughs> I don't know. All I don't right. Know. On that note. <laughs> On that note, take uh, in case I don't see you. Good afternoon, good evening, and good night. Gracious, you made it to the end of the video. You're one of very few <laughs> to make it to the end. Yes, thank you very much. Make sure you hit that like button and subscribe to Comic Movie Marks Podcast and hit the notification bell. You know, all these fucking YouTube channels say this shit, so I'm going to say it now. Yes, it's perfect. And if you want to hear our full podcast, you can check out our podcast on iTunes or any other podcast subscription service. Make sure you subscribe. Thanks again. Yo!